this to an hour instead of two hours so that we also get a little bit of time in the show before it closes. And um, the way that I'm going to do this is we're going to take a question from the audience and then one of us will answer it. We'll take another question, the next one will answer it down the line. So if there's somebody specific you want to ask a question, wait until we get to the
Like not faxing, not e was, there was no email then. Just remember it as I go, right? I sat there with a three by five card and wrote down things that sounded interesting, and then I went back and said, well, you know, I'll take that one, that one out. Yeah. So I, I still have the three by five card actually, what? that has all these names on it, all these cards, ones I crossed out and passed over, and ones I accepted. Uh, that, that's how it was in the very beginning. And, and the further down the line it got, you know, then we started getting. We, we still didn't get a lot color wise. We didn't get a lot. They didn't want to release that information. But but it's very different now. And I would let somebody who's getting assignments from them currently tell you about how it's what it's like to do that now. Well, we can move on and have Carla describe it. Introduce yourself. First. Okay. Hi. Um, <laughs> Carla Ortiz. Hi. My name's uh, Carla Ortiz. Um, I literally have only just been working with magic for about a year. So um, she's got some amazing stuff already. Okay. Um, I'm you guys known... probably saw her planeswalker the same one. Oh yeah, I, 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 I just thank you. I just did a planeswalker, um, Ashiok, um, Nightmare Dude, and he's a chick. He's a boy. Lots of controversy. People don't know if he's a chick or a guy. Um, but I'm, but my my biggest card so far actually has been Tesa, um, um, and Boy of Ghost. I'm currently working at ILM um, as a concept artist, and yeah, and um, do I get questions or do I answer? Well, I thought we just roll this question on to you. Okay, okay. It's a briefing it's process. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, Noni, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so the assignments, I it, it feels really, it's just fun because you get like a little email that says, um, you know work or um, purchasing purchasing order or something like that and it comes with a little number a color and then at the bottom there's like a description and they're usually like a paragraph or so of what it is you know like so for Chesa it's like a ruthless woman says you know sits behind her desk you know she holds her cane evil you know there's creepy ghost and shit flying behind her <laughs> they don't say shit I'm, I'm <laughs> they might say shit they do like email but nothing is yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then sometimes they, you know, it ends with a description, um, a note of what the art director wants to see. It's like, I really want to see, you know, I want you to focus on, you know, her emotion. I want you to focus on, you know, fire or, or the spirits behind her. Um, and, and, then then, a note the and then a note. And if it's a character that's already existed or previously, you know, um, there, they give you a link of that or a link to the style guide where to see it. And then there's the deadline. The sketch that when it's due with the deadline and the price, and um, so it's a little bit much for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah that's that's my All right. Next up. All right. I'm Cynthia Shepard, and my description of my career so far sounds eerily similar to yours, Noni. I've been painting since the first block of Innistrad, and most of my cards are vampires. <laughs> so we we'll like twins. I like it. Um, yeah, no, I've been working for them for about three years, and I have about two years of cards out. Same as you. So Do you know what your biggest card right now is? My biggest card so far was Sublime Archangel at M13, and then uh, I just did uh, Jaliva which was spoiled at San Diego Comic Con. She's a mythic rare uh, commander for the commander stuff coming out. And I have a charcoal drawing for her in the show. Um, any questions? <laughs> yes? Uh, do any of you don't know how to play the game? Oh, playing the game. Um, uh, I, I don't know how to play now. <laughs> yeah, I played in the 90s. Every set that comes out has the different mechanics and everything. I kind of like, I returned to Ravnica and was pretty easy. Wait, wait, like, yeah. you work on a game? <laughs> <laughs> I went to one like pre-release and that was fine. I got my ass kicked by like a 14-year-old. <laughs> I, I want to add really quick, I, I used to have a black and white cleric deck that I just owned everybody at when I was in college, so I am. Would it own now? <laughs> it would own because it's all the cards are so cheap. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, I, I know life. nothing about legacy. I think everyone's got everyone's different. You know, like there's some magic artists that don't play at all. They just do the art. Uh, how many? I, I was gonna say, how many people can DM a Dungeons and Dragons game? Ooh. I know. That's, 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 I think quite a few of us that probably have that kind of background. Right? So don't hold us to our gaming capability. Don't hold us to our yeah, 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 yeah. wonder. Yeah. 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 Just to catch you up, Donato, we're just going down the line, introducing ourselves, oh, okay, and each right. one taking one question right now. Okay, so check. you're actually not even technically late. 
Because oh. you haven't gotten down there. So yeah. I can go sign some more magic cards. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave. Oh, uh, okay. I'm Dave Palumbo. Uh, I started working with magic, I think, in 2008, uh, after quite a number of tries of getting my foot in that door. I think it took about two years for me to actually get any work. And um, I've been working pretty consistently since then. Uh, my biggest cards are generally not cards that people actually play. What's, what's the little one-eyed guy? Totally lost. Totally oh, lost. <laughs> He's worthless in game, but people seem to love him. I actually, that's that's funny, I just um, sent in work for uh, the set that was just recently commissioned that won't be out until next year, and uh, one of the pieces has some very small figures in it, and I got a note back that said, uh, ordinarily this wouldn't be an issue, but could you please go back in and just refine the detail on these figures a little bit, not because anybody will be able to see it on the printed card, but when people play online they can zoom in and see the art much larger. That was a note that I've never gotten before. So. Uh, and the second part of that question, is, is there any sort of digital rights agreement that you have to agree to? Like, it's, it, it it's, a, it's a work for hire okay. contract, so they own everything, and then they make exceptions in the contract to allow us to sell prints at conventions and that sort of thing. Oh, cool. But it's basically a full, buy, full buyout of rights. Uh, I'm Randy Gallegos, or uh, Gallegos, as many people often pronounce it, which is, which is fine. Like, I'm very used to hearing that. It's not fun. So, as I'm listening to that, kind of amazingly, I think I have the longest spread here. Like, I started in 94, 95 with Ice Age, and I mean, I'm still doing stuff on occasion. I don't do as, as much as I used to. I'll go out a block and come in a block, that sort of thing. I have some stuff later on in the Theros block. Um, that's mm -hmm. kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I was like in third grade when I started. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, you were kind of. Yeah, yeah you were. About kind of was. Um, so I guess for my more popular cards would be like the reprint of Balance, um, Soul Warden, things like that over the years. Uh, so that's that's me. Question. Yes. Um, as far as like the average car is concerned, what brings in the most income? Is it the prints? The original sales? Um, well, for me, because most of my work is painted, uh, if the painting sells, that's going to be actually the biggest, <coughs> usually the biggest thing, uh, oftentimes because the price might be over the commission price. Like they'll pay a certain amount for the commission to do the work. And then if, if the original sale obviously is higher priced, that's your biggest chunk of change. There's a few prints that I've done. I mean, some of my really early work, like A Dance of the Dead, for instance, from Ice Age. That's probably like the biggest income generator because just over the years it just sold so many prints of that. Or Soul Warden, for instance. <laughs> I have one. Yeah, the, the prints can end up. <laughs> prints, <laughs> prints can end up being your biggest seller. It has to have that kind of longevity. Like most of the early prints that I had, I don't even bring them anymore because I just don't want to see them. Um, <laughs> so there's that. All right, Steve. I'm Steve Belladin. Uh, I've been working on Magic since uh, was it Cold Snap? Uh, I don't know what my biggest cards are. They're all the same size. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, well, you know, yucka yucka. Um, I don't know, probably, you know, death mark duress, you know, that kind of thing. I've seen a lot of those, signed a lot of them, and then just recently you over. You haven't had an over, over yet? No, no, no. Oh, okay. no. Yeah, that one, yeah, that never happened. Oh, I guess the, the what is it, the Planescape? Those were bigger, right? There you go. Yeah. Anyway, question. And that's where I killed the room. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you get to finish the illustration? Uh, generally speaking, it's about, uh, we get six weeks total. They have a sketch date, um, like that's about three weeks in. And uh, if you get your sketches in early, usually you can get, you know, a review and have more time to paint, which is typically what I do. I'm, Get my sketches in because I'm a slow painter. Um, so generally, like if you're by the rules, it's like three weeks for sketches and three weeks for finishes. But um, you can sort of wiggle a little bit back and forth. All right, Donato. 
Um, the Nato Gin Cola was first brought on the Magic on uh, Mirage uh, back in, I think it was 96. And I kind of mostly dropped out of uh, doing the Magic cards kind of slowly uh, around 2003-ish or so. And I had a few cards. I still have, I think one just came out. Uh, periodically, I'll, I'll get a call from Jeremy to, to be considered and included in the decks. But uh, I came for, to Magic from a, a friend of a friend I met at a convention. Uh, and so that's a great reason why you want to attend conventions as, a, as an artist. Uh, as I remember signing at the Philadelphia, this Philadelphia Comic Con. Uh, not signing, I was there with, just to see what comic book conventions were like. I think it was actually my very first comic book convention. And uh, a friend of mine, Steve Ellis, brought me along, and his friend, Brian Wackowitz, was swarmed with people, and are like, you know, asking for his signature. And I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, he's a celebrity. He's like he's crazy. And, uh, and so Brian, you know, we got to know each other, and Brian suggested I send my work to this new company, Wizards of the Coast, uh, and to be considered for doing work, you know, creating cards. And so I did eventually, about a year later, finally get around to doing that. And, uh, and then I, I had a nice, I've had a nice long run with Wizards. With Wizards. So yours was through a portfolio submission? No desire to work for Wizards. Um, you know, I, I mean, as, it was just another client. It was like another book cover client. I was busy doing book cover illustration. I sent them my book cover portfolio and uh, the art director, uh, Sui Ann Harkey, just fired back immediately with four commissions for, from, for me. And uh, uh, I jokingly state that was my, uh, I love painting hands, and so my first magic card was a hand job. <laughs> well played, well played. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, that's a powerful card. That's a powerful card. That's my favorite. You don't forget your first hand job. <laughs> oh, I think that's the social police calling me right now. Oh yeah. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> I have a question okay. for you, Donato. Um, well, now I forgot it. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I'm an excellent moderator. There we go. Right there. Um, when you're building, a, when you're trying to submit to Wizards for your initial work in, in Magic, do you feel like you need a piece or pieces in your portfolio? that are very, very magic specific, or can your portfolio just be good? Uh, now, I'd say you, you got to have a look of magic. Okay. Uh, back when I was submitting, uh, actually, really anything went for the cards. I mean, we had, you, I mean, Sue Ann Harkey was an art, new kind of new art director with Wizards of the Coast, and their intent was to draw in as many diverse talents as possible uh, to inform and create a broader vision of what magic was. So we had comic book artists working on it, uh, traditional realists, cartoonists. Uh, it was really an incredible, strange world of what was going on. Humor, uh, satiric satire, realism, harsh realism. Uh, but now, you know, you know, that's not what you see in magic. So you do need, and it speaks to actually with all, all clients, uh, any kind of professional business that you're trying to enter into, you need to submit work which is appropriate for that clientele that they could actually utilize it. It does make it easier. Do you feel like ballpark is good or should you no. do a piece specifically like this is, this is, I did this as if it was a magic job? I did this as if it was a magic job. You don't need to fill your portfolio only with those things, uh -huh. but show them at least just, actually just one, okay. one option. Say, yo, this is, this is what I'm capable of. Here's and here's the rest of my portfolio supporting my consistency mm -hmm. and able to delivering other kinds of jobs, uh, supporting your technical ability. And those consistent jobs also show your ability to manage professional relationships with a client. Because Wizards of the Coast, is, they are a company based on timeliness, if you've ever seen their contract, about reduction in fees if you're a day late. Uh, and so, 
it's a, it's, it's, a commi it's a commitment. They're taking a risk on you, hiring you to help them with their product. And if you blow that deadline, you flake out, they have to find a replacement and a rush, and that takes up time and energy from their production staff, and they'll never hire you again. Uh, I mean, that's what I tell my students. I wish I could fire my students sometimes when they come in late on a project in my class. I'd love to. Say, you know, bye, never have to see you again. Let's focus on the people who did meet the demands of the assignment. Uh, and, but a wonderful, you know, you get to do that in real commercial work. You say bye, and you, and you find the next magic artist. So yes, uh, one one or two pieces, and then fill up the rest uh, with high quality work. You can find um, actual copies of um, the text assignment that you would get from Magic by just doing a Google search for um, like a typical Magic commission. You just search for Magic Art Assignment, and a lot of the times there are articles where the art director talks about they they put the actual text that they sent to the artist and then show the image and talk about the whole process. So in addition to finding um, an example assignment that you could possibly work from to show how you would approach one of those assignments, you get to see like an, another artist's process approaching it too. So. I'd like to add something to that too. If, if you're not going to fill your book specifically just with um, you know pieces that look like magic cards, it's also important to have either strong figure work which they look for a lot. I think you guys agree, right? Um, if, if you want to paint figures, you've got to have really strong figure work consistently through your book. You also, like, if you want to paint creatures or landscapes or something specific, definitely fill your book with what you want to do for magic, if you're looking for magic cards. Can I ask, yeah. just on this panel, like, how many folks got their first magic work through an in-person meeting versus <coughs> through your sending a portfolio in? Yeah. Which would just be mm -hmm. Donato, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, wow. They have. Uh, Am I that gray? <laughs> I got it from meet them. <laughs> I, I will say they have the, the Art Drop website, which they do. It, it feels like a black hole because nobody responds. You get no confirmation. So it actually is a black hole. Looked at it. Because <laughs> well, you all had to meet someone. Well, but but that's no, well, it does work. But they do. Yeah. They, they, they do look at everything. And they've hired people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know actually a couple people that have just sent it in and they got it immediately back. So, so it does work. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, it, yeah. but it does speak to kind of the importance, like Donato yeah. said, of coming to shows and yeah. or to signing up for the reviews because mm -hmm. you can get that immediate feedback. And so it's not a black hole. Like they'll look at your work either way. But if they can talk to you, talk you through your portfolio and tell you, you know, some of the things that they might want to see that they're not seeing or things you can be working on that maybe you didn't think you should be working on, uh, I think it's always better to do it in person <coughs> if you can. My experience was, uh, it, it really was sitting down at a table with an art director uh, who looked at my portfolio and told me all the things that were not up to the quality standard that they had. Mm -hmm. And then going back to that same convention a year later mm -hmm. and showing it with a, a whole new batch of paintings and saying, I see improvement, but there's still this and this and this that I want to see. And then the next show I was at, uh, talking to someone who said, oh yeah, we want to put you on the next set. You yeah, know, and, mine, took, and, mine took three portfolio reviews. Too. Yeah. Did you swap out all your images between I didn't reviews? swap out all my images, but I, I did have images that um, I went back and changed completely based on the feedback. Yeah. So um, there was like an example of what what working with me on changes would be like Interesting. in that. Smart. And, I, and I did always have new pieces. So. Right. You, you'd be surprised, like, you know, they see a ton of portfolios, but I've heard art directors mention certain people that they've seen their portfolio two or three times, and they've noticed how many pieces didn't change in the portfolio. Sometimes none of them. Sometimes yeah. none, and they notice. And it's well, they're art directors for a reason. They remember those images, that's right. and they remember yeah. who did them. And then when they see that same artist coming at them with like a, a bigger year, and better a portfolio, later, yeah. they're like, this is somebody who's actually committed. I can see how fast they are and how serious they are. So um, one portfolio review often is enough. Anyway, just because like they they want to they want to get that comparison between two years of portfolios. Um, if you wanted to do like a magic esque assignment, is it okay to pick a card you're like a fan of and redesign it, or do they want you to have completely original like concept of a magic card or the brief? I I, I wouldn't see any reason why they would not like to see that and they sometimes it's kind of common that they recommission 
cards to, if it's coming out in a new set, they want new artwork. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It also, oh, I was just saying. You don't get in trouble for that. Okay. I've never heard no, of it. No, no, no. Because yeah. they, I mean, they publish style guides and everything that you have to work from. So the people that do the original concept are, you're, you're kind of taking their ideas and putting them in the cards anyway. So they want to see what is yeah. a style Someone guide. Someone asked that. Oh, a style guide. <laughs> you're really proud. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I was part of the uh, world building team for Innistrad. Um, I was the weak link. Yay! Um, so essentially what happens before any given magic block, which is, you know, the annual three sets, which is a whole new world, before that exists, um, they hire a group of artists to chain them to desks in a room. Uh, Richard Witters, the lead copy, uh, the lead uh, art, uh, concept artist, uh, basically deprives us of food, sleep, and water until we see the things that we have to draw in hallucinations. Um, but actually, we just sit there and uh, we get a vague brief. Like Innistrad started out with, uh, you know, Prussia in the 18th century. Fantasy world, gothic car, go. And it was like, well, okay, well, what's in a gothic car stuff? Um, well, zombies, uh, werewolves, vampires. So it was just figuring out what does a zombie in this world look like? What does a vampire in this world look like? What does the what do the normal people wear in this world? What does the architecture look like? And we figure ba baseline versions of all of that. Uh, in hopes that when um, it's published into one visual bible, the 90 or so artists that work on a given magic, magic set can take those images and extrapolate from them uh, and say, well, this is what, you know, the, the, a cool idea is, but how can I do that cool vampire even better? Um, and then, you know, on the other hand, sometimes you get incidents like the uh, Kifkin hat from Lorwyn, where essentially there was one hat depicted in the entire Lorwyn <laughs> guide, and a hundred artists showed, you know, Kifkin wearing that same hat. So, you know, hopefully there's extrapolation. So, um, you yeah. know. And there's some, sometimes some really general stuff, too, like uh, along with the style guide will be the note that we want to see lots of sunlight. We yeah. want to see, I think on Theros, I remember they said, like sunlight and magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, sunlight. and no white buildings. The buildings should be colorful. You know, so that, that way everybody individually is well, working in their own studio, right. but it's all going to be cohesive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of top level direct. I remember in Innistrad, there was one in particular where they said because they wanted to have the feel of you participating in the events in Innistrad, they didn't want to see any overhead shots. Yeah. Point, point of view was yeah. 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 Point of view. Yeah. 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 Oh, they really wanted to be like, you're staring at the screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. down on the ground, yeah, you're not. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're going to need help, right? That's what I was fascinating. Yeah, there's usually one or two little notes like that 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 is something that needs to be done in all of the cards throughout the whole world, but it's like a much more subtle thing that you won't notice even when you're looking at all the cards, but it'll sort of subconsciously make them all feel like they're in the same world. <laughs> so basically when you get that brief, highlight that part like three times, right? Yeah. Okay, you got it. Save yourself time. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, no death mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think there's still some got in there. Yeah. Let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. So this might be kind of uh, <laughs> like, like, like I'd like to break into a land card. I mean, not specifically just. Stay